Good morning, good morning. Welcome to another piano lesson with Emmy John. Um, so today I just want us, us to look at something very simple. Yes, um, I came across this um, topic for a while and then I decided to bring it down to, to you. So what's the topic? Primary and secondary dominance. So somebody must, be, must have been asking what is dominance, then why primary, why secondary? My goal in this lesson is to break it down to ensure that you understand the concept of primary and secondary dominant voices. How are they used and why are they called the names that they bear? So without wasting some more time, let's sharply dive into it. So before we go into it on the key of E, I wanted to uh, please like this video, share this video, comment on this video. Let me see your comment and then let's share this video, please. Share this video, share this video, share this video. So long as you can watch this video, share this video that's a great thing that's the best thing you can do for me today share this video share this video primary and secondary dominant to understand more of this my ongoing system of piano training is on fifthly to enroll send a dm to me which is with the number on the screen on the flyer send a dm to me and then we'll get you registered feel free and then let's take your plane to the next level don't forget the more you know is the more you earn so you cannot end beyond what you know and then you can also play beyond what you know so it is the theory you have at hand it is the applications that you have at hand that can enable you be able to create and do much more stuff than what you're doing right now so please feel free to dm me and let's get you registered in our sismos piano training and we kick off so without wasting more time secondary and primary dominance now in the key of c as a case study our c is always regarded as to uh, to be our tonic our one our two three four five six seven back to the one now our one is always a major triad two is always a minor triad three is always a minor triad the four is always a major triad the five is the only dominant voicing we have our six is our minor Seven is our diminish. Then back to our one. Let me break down something from here. Which if I don't break down, you may not understand clearly what I'm talking about. Now, bear in mind, when you are playing triad form, the word triad simply means three notes. When you are playing in three note form, the one chord is always a major. The two chord is always a minor. The three chord is always a minor. The four chord is always a major. The five chord is always a major. The six chord is always a minor. The seven chord is always a diminished. Back to the major again. But when you are playing in four, four notes, we call it in sevenths. Seventh. When we are playing in seventh, then the one becomes a major seven. The two becomes a minor seven. The three becomes a minor seven again. The four becomes a major seven. The five becomes a dominant. That's where the concept of dominant comes. The six chord becomes a minor seven. The seven becomes a half diminish. So what we play as B, D, F, A is a half diminish voicing. Half diminish. Then back to the major seven. Please don't forget that. Bear that in mind. Very, very, very important. Then, therefore, we only have one established, only one dominant in the whole of the tonic so far. In the diatonic chords, there's only one dominant, which is the five. Therefore, called the primary dominant. The word primary simply means important, the basic, the most important one, or the only. So, this is the. So, the five chord becomes the only dominant voicing we have. Now, where is the concept of secondary dominant? Where is it coming in? Let me deviate a bit and bring it back home. Let me find a way to con it so that it can be very, very understandable. Let me do my best to be slow as possible. Now, in my video on how to practice, I talked about the six classes of chord. If you are watching this video and you have not watched out how to practice, then you might be making a mistake. Do well to go back to my videos and watch how to practice. How to practice, I dwelt on the six classes of chord, the types of chords. And then I also talked about in another video how they are used. That brought us to the level where we are today. So please do well to check that out and 
join us here. Also, feel free to enroll in my six months piano training for more of this and more breakdown of stuffs like this. Now, let's get something very clear here. If a dominant chord, we said the five is a dominant, why is this a dominant? In the types of chord, when we are checking in the key of G, this is the roots, which is our one, this is our three, this is our five, this is our minus seven. So now I'm not looking at this from the key of C again, no. And in fact, let me give you a secret. Whenever you are playing, you want to explore your mind. Feel free, always think the way I think. See the note you are on as your root key and express yourself on the root key. Example, I'm playing on the key of C. Once I'm playing the five chord, I don't see it as C again. I see it as five. I enter to the five to do my movement. So that's part of the ways I think. So when you hear I'm doing stuff, most time I'm taking the original key of where I'm, I'm taking the note I'm playing as a one and I'm feeling myself inside the key. Now, you will have issue doing this if you don't know how to play on all 12 keys. That is why the 12 keys are very, very, very important. It gives you freedom of expression. Now, in the key of E, I was doing a praise uh, breakdown or a praise video, a praise arrangement I did, where I was playing um, a song like... Um, What I'm doing. So what am I doing? I'm taking it like I'm playing the key of B, and I just hit. So you see all these nuances you hear. They're all just taking from the key. I'm playing on the key of E uh, of key of E major, but because I'm playing my chord five on the key of E, I saw my five as my one, so I can do. So I'm thinking five now. That is part of the ways I think. So inside the key. I've come back to the key. So five to the two. Then I'm back. I can still resolve back to C. So by taking the nuances inside the key of C. That's how I move. So let's get back now on the key of C. So now the secondary dominant now simply mean now I believe you have understood what primary dominants are. Now what are secondary dominants? Secondary dominant simply means converting another note in the diatonic chord, which is not a dominant. The moment you convert another note which is not a dominant to become a dominant, then you are playing a secondary dominant. That's very simple. I repeat again, the five is only dominant. The moment I make my one a dominant again, I'm playing a secondary dominant. Why? Because it's not the original dominant. I've only converted the one chord to become a dominant. So the moment I do that, I'm playing a secondary dominant. That's simply what it means. I can make my two a secondary dominant, I can make my three a secondary dominant, I can play my four, even my sharp four a secondary dominant, and the rest of that. That's how it works. Now, bear in mind the rule of dominant chord are always a five that I want to resolve to a one. So the moment I convert my one as a dominant, meaning that I'm thinking of a five that I want to resolve to a one. Therefore, five that I want to resolve to a one. Let me play the simple song. So ready now.
again. So it's C's to the four. I didn't just want to do C's four. I did C's one four. I made the one a, a secondary dominant. So C's. Then one. So see what I did as my one. The dominant chord. But I made it a dominant 13. So I did my C and B flat on the left. Over E, A, and D. Coming out to the four. So again. Still do more secondary dominant. I can go with my two to become a secondary dominant. Let's try that out. Two to five. If a two become a secondary dominant, it means we are resolving to five. So so I've converted it to a two dominant voicing. The only difference now is I change the voicing. Normally it should be like this. Or Normally it should be this, but I did this. So what am I doing? C and F sharp on the left hand over A D F sharp on the right hand. Then resolving out to the five. Let me apply it again. F sharp on the left hand, A, D, F sharp on the right hand, resolving down to the 5. On my 5, I have um, B and G on the left hand over A, D, and G on the right hand. So that's how basically secondary dominant works. So try to explore and uh, convert some of your primary chords to dominant chords, especially when you're having them as a movement or as a passing chords. So I'd like you to try that out. Thank you so much, and God bless you. I still remain Amy John. Feel free to enroll in my piano six training where we take stuff like this even more to the next level. God bless you. Amy John.